Okay. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, let's pray and begin with our uh, class. So let me lead with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this new day and this new week. Father, even as we, uh, Lord, go through the week, Father, we pray that you will enable us to have a deeper walk with you. Strengthen us, Lord, uh, even through your word. And uh, Lord, we especially pray, Lord, that um, as, as we learn about the prophetic, that your spirit, Lord, will move powerfully uh, in our midst. And uh, Father, that you would minister to each one of our hearts. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we've been learning about uh, flowing in the prophetic so far. We've seen practical things that we have to consider, things to do, not to do, and then how to actually release that gift of prophecy. Okay. And in the last class, we um, took those three steps. What are the three steps? Correct. Perceive. Correct. Perceive. Perceive. Ah. Release. Okay. Or prophesy. Three P's. Pray, perceive, prophesy. So we tune into the spirit of God and we try to listen to what he is saying. The information of God can come in various ways. It can come uh, in a visual form. It can come... Um, in an audible form, but even the audible, generally we say either God shows a picture of the word or we receive that word in our spirit. There can be some sort of a, uh, receiving of a word, a sentence, a paragraph. Uh, and also sometimes it, it is uh, physical sensations. So based on that, in the last class we prayed and different ones of us had a word. So I wanted to ask us, uh, when the words were released, I know that we didn't have anyone affirming it and saying, oh, yeah, that's for me. I felt like this is for me. But later on, as you thought about it, did you did any, any of you feel like anything that was shared in the class ministered to you? Even those who are online, if you felt that, yeah, I felt like God was speaking to me, we could uh, just share and then I'll go further today. I mean, just for the glory of God, just to know that when God speaks, it ministers to our hearts. That's the point, nothing else. So if anyone sensed that a word was, a, was um, you know, dealing with you, you could just uh, share and speak about it. When online batch, please feel free to share. Um, yes, uh, when you I mean, minister to me, I felt it's for me. And that verse also, like, uh, yeah. Isaiah 60. Mm -hmm. So I felt, okay, this is really Lord speaking to me. Even though I was not aware that time, then later on, yes, I felt mm -hmm. it's really, he's mm -hmm. speaking to me. Amen. That verse. Amen. Praise God. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so the scripture that Anand shared, uh, I think Isaiah 5 and verse 2, right? Uh, I was thinking about it because uh, just a few weeks prior to that, we were... Uh, uh, like I, I was in a study, Bible study, and we were discussing about uh, uh, John 15, how God wants fruitfulness and how he looks for fruitfulness. If there's no fruitfulness, uh, he prunes those branches. And God is always expecting fruitfulness. Okay, And uh, there's no compromise to fruitfulness in the Christian life. So uh, somehow it felt related to that because... Uh, it, it, I know it, it sounded like God is disappointed, like I expected more, but nothing is there. But then somehow I, I was reminded of that same uh, John 15 about how God wants us to be fruitful in our spiritual walk, in our you know natural uh, walk. And uh, it, it really like sort of, um, it was like a jolting thing, but then it was so good because 
uh, it was helping me reflect about my life and think like, okay, am I fruitful or not in this? Am I fruitful or not? What are the changes that I have to make? So I really felt like, yeah, that word was probably for me. Like God was just uh, shaking me up. Yeah. Any any other uh, any other things? After the class, I was just uh, thinking of what happened in the class, mm -hmm. the activity that we did. Yeah. I was thinking and uh, like when considered everything, uh, what Anand said actually, mm -hmm. it spoke to me back actually. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Correct. Uh, I know where I was. I was in the ground. I was just uh, thinking of like, okay, we did practicals, but why there is no affirmations? Mm -hmm. Did we did it wrong? I was yeah. thinking all that and then I just what anand said it came to me and uh, what he said is like god was expecting more but yeah correct and uh, i just it made me to reflect upon how i am doing and uh, mm -hmm. what is the potential god gave us but how much extent i am using it so yeah, it's yeah. actually so powerful and mr yeah true true so uh, so you see how it works isn't it we may expect that in that very moment we can identify and many times that's how it happens but it's also possible that when we go back and reflect we recognize that uh, that word was from the lord and it's helping us draw closer to god because what is the word supposed to do it's supposed to build us up in the lord isn't it so uh, then even as we're reflecting on the word which uh, anand gave obviously it's it's helping us to align our lives to the purposes of God and be fruitful, uh, then we know that, yeah, it is from God. Okay, it's not breaking us, it's building us. So in that way. Uh, so think about the words that you've got also. What did we say about uh, a word that we are not able to confirm right away? What should, what are we supposed to do? Keep it on the shelf. Yeah, just keep it on the shelf. Pray, trust the Lord. And uh, as time goes by, um, you may have a confirmation for the whole thing or for parts of that prophetic word. Okay. Um, I really wish we could keep doing this, but we have to go forward with our uh, teaching here. Uh, you can always practice the prophesying in your small group settings. And uh, uh, we'll see how exactly to do this in, a, in an appropriate way. So there are a few more guidelines here in the same chapter we look at the prophetic in personal use so the prophetic can be practiced anywhere um, anywhere means literally anywhere it all depends on whether we are trusting god for a word or not so i was sharing with us that um, when we uh, used to do these outreaches earlier and we would go on the streets. Uh, two things that we would do is to minister a prophetic word. Of course, share the gospel. That was the main part. But wherever possible, minister the prophetic word. Uh, and also, if they need healing, then pray over them for healing. So on the streets, you know, this, this was something that was practiced. It can be practiced anywhere. Uh, maybe we are in the mall or we are we are out, uh, uh, you know, meeting with our family or spending time with our family. It's a recreation time. The prophetic can still flow. And uh, we've got to tune into that. And it's so amazing. It's so amazing when we hear from the Lord at any given point. Okay, So practice it all the time. Practice it even with your family. You know, sometimes you can just say... Um, I had this dream. It was like this, like that. And this is what God said. Um, and and it, it ministers to people's hearts. So practice the prophetic at all times. And it's got to become very natural for us. I know in a setting where we don't, uh, uh, we are not open to the prophetic, it's a little difficult in the beginning. People don't like it. Uh, people associate abuse with it and all. But once we learn what it is and how to flow in it in a good way and we understand that it's a blessing, it's nice to have it as like, you know, just a part of our community. At any given point, I saw this for you. Here's a word for you. Uh, and, and we should flow like that. 
so at all times we can use the prophetic and uh, yeah so even when it comes to the workplace scenario uh, when let's say we are running a business we need strategies we need new ideas uh, we can be we can pray and say lord give us some ideas give us some uh, you know insight into this matter what are you saying what is your goal for this company for this project and when we depend on god like that it's amazing the all, all the things that god would do in our midst okay so even when it comes to the workplace business business settings we can be prophetic now it, when it comes to prophesying in small groups um there are a couple of instructions that apostle paul gives in first corinthians chapter 14 remember i had discussed earlier first corinthians chapter 12 he introduces the nine gifts of the spirit first corinthians 14 he lays down certain ground rules on how to practice the gifts in such a way that it is beneficial for the body so we've got to go by these guidelines that paul states so we look at some guidelines when we are prophesying to one another it needs to be to build people up and not to put them down so that's very very clear cut in the writings of paul first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 26 it's there in our notes uh, yeah could you please read it 1 corinthians 14 verse 26 First Corinthians uh, chapter fourteen verse twenty six. How it is then, brother, brethren, whenever you come together, each one, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Mm -hmm. So each one has a message in some form or the other. It's a psalm. It's a teaching. It's a tongue. It's a revelation. it's an interpretation but what is the purpose of e yeah edification edification means what building up yeah building up the other people so whatever word we share it's got to build others up in the lord next there has to be opportunity for everyone to participate and that's what the scripture says first corinthians 14 and verse 31 for you all for you can all prophesy one by one then all may learn and all may be encouraged okay so notice there you can all prophesy one by one it goes to show that an opportunity can be given to every person to prophesy we have already established that all believers can prophesy that is the reason he say all of you can prophesy one by one now if it was only the church leadership whom god had anointed to prophesy there's no need for this but he's saying all of you can prophesy just do it in an orderly fashion so even when it comes to the operation of the gifts of the holy spirit there can be some order it does not have to be uh, you know chaotic disruptive it does not have to be he says one by one so then take turns and you say what you want to say and he uh, puts in there that all may learn and that all may be encouraged that is the purpose of prophecy anyway now let's move on to the next um, instruction here first corinthians 14 and verse 40 could someone read it please uh, let all things be done decently and in order yeah uh i earlier said things ought to be done in a proper way and without chaos so same let all things be done decently and in order so in a small group setting the point is that by the operation of the gifts of the spirit we should not cause any confusion how will confusions come let's say people are prophesying in a small group how will confusions come yeah okay in the release of the gift they are telling confusion they are not clear about what they are saying okay if they are not 
clear about what they're saying, if they don't know what prophecy is all about, what else? Hmm. Yeah, when it's not correct. Okay, then it's not building people up. Um, yes, it could be all of these reasons. But how will we know? How how will we sort of be able to um, correct it? Huh? Yeah, how to correct? Like in a group we are prophesying. Okay, yeah. Correct the what is going on in the setting. In one setting, there's a lot of confusion. That's what we are saying. Now, how to how to huh? Good. Like who knows uh, about this all things? So yes. if we are telling anything wrong, so he can correct us. Good. So ideally, if we have people who can, you remember we said earlier, judge. Every word has to be judged. So if we have people who can judge then it is better because uh, someone can bring in correction someone can point out that the word is not aligned to the scriptures or something like that so having somebody to correct is always helpful if we also look at you know why confusions come many times confusions can come because um, in the group setting, what tends to happen is we may have one or two people who will just take over. You know, they'll keep saying, they'll keep doing, they won't give others a chance. Uh, and uh, with the gift also comes this sense of, um, you know, like it, it's not really accomplishment, but we feel happy that God is working through us, isn't it? So the tendency is that some of us can become very enthusiastic and we can just keep flowing and we're not allowing other people to flow at all. So if there is an understanding among the group or if there's a person who is there to help us um, identify these things, they can guide, they can tell us. Hmm? So this is the manner in which in a small group setting we can operate in uh, the prophetic gift. So things like prophesy one by one, um, let everything be done decently and in order. Judge the prophetic word. So that way, it will still be for the benefit of the people. If, if someone is trying to be the star attraction, maybe the, you know, the uh, uh, older people or someone who is more well-versed in prophecy can guide them and say, hey, come on, you know, let's thank you for sharing your word. Let's give others a chance. And then slowly each one can practice it. So that's a little bit more about practicing. Uh, now we will move on to hearing from the Holy Spirit. But before that, if there is anything else you want to ask or discuss, we can. I'll just uh, leave the time open. Yes. So, ma'am, regarding correction, ma'am. Ah. So I want to ask, like, okay, if like, who is who is able to correct? He is getting the confu confusion. Okay. So how it will be? Then others can also judge. See, all of us carry the Holy Spirit. So, um, so that's the advantage in a group setting. We are not depending on one person. Let's say there is a group and I'm the leader and I'm causing the confusion. All of you can uh, wave a red flag and say, "Sorry, we can't take this." So then. It's fine. Others can always step in. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. A anything else about prophesying? All right. So let's move to um, chapter 9 here which most probably many of us have heard different parts of in various sessions, especially during the supernatural hour when we encourage us to flow in the spirit. We um, have taken you through this a couple of times. Yes. Yeah, sure. When, when something came yes. uh, to someone, if it is open, 
to interpret like like if you saw something and uh-huh. then you ask us all to interpret okay uh, and then how come it works like prince prince uh, will interpret in a different way sri radha will interpret in a different way so there are different different perspectives as a human beings if i see if that's a bottle i'll see in my perspective in a different way i'll see maybe the cap the bottle cap uh, so yes. we see only the bottle model so we have different perspectives so when when it comes to prophecy we should not uh, impose our own perspective our own feelings on that it should come from god right yes so after that also we will all tell our different different interpretations mm. so how come to come to a conclusion which one is correct mm. okay so when it comes to interpretation of a prophetic word let's remember that it's not a human exercise you got it we are not doing it by our logic yes of course reasoning is involved which we will consider in chapter 9 but interpretation is by the spirit of god you see go back to joseph a man who was able to interpret why because the spirit of god was in him okay or the spirit of god was guiding him and that is how he was able to interpret dreams uh, that different people had so the point that i'm trying to make is interpretation is not of human capacity so the interpretation that we must depend on is the interpretation that the spirit of god would give us that's the whole point see because as you rightly said we can look at something if i see red you know if i see a red square it can mean a thousand things it can mean danger it can mean stop it can mean the blood of jesus it can mean so many things but what is the right interpretation the right interpretation should be by the spirit of god so that's what we want which is why we need to pray which is why we we need to let the spirit of god guide us and when the interpretation comes also we'll have that sense of peace in us that yes correct this is it we we also would sense that it is correct and maybe we'll have witness from a few more people which also says it is correct see we must always look at interpretation this way at least that's how i see even when we read the bible right uh, th- think with me suppose you write a book okay you write a book and uh, your your book is about a particular theme now you know that you know what you want to convey right let's say that you know you're you're talking about uh, uh, generosity okay but somebody else comes they misinterpret your your book and they say no it's all it's all about corruption it's all about extortion they say something else how would you feel you'll feel really betrayed because no i didn't i didn't mean to write about evil things i meant to write about something good my book is about generosity so who knows the correct meaning of the book or what the men the author is supposed to know right so the same way when it comes to studying the bible people say the interpretation is this the interpretation is that but what is the real interpretation it's what the author meant that's what we have to get and which is why we keep saying go by a couple of scriptures then you know what what is there you know throughout what is already agreed upon let scripture interpret scripture same way when it comes to interpretation of dreams prophetic words the holy spirit knows what he wanted to say by it which is why once i release the prophecy my work is not over my work of faith is not over yet i have to trust god for the interpretation so then you start that exercise of interpreting it by the spirit okay so we'll we'll uh, read some more i think that will help uh, anand but that's the way it's not you know your interpretation her interpretation their interpretation it's not like that ma this judging is only done through the word with the holy spirit or uh. or it can be done by the experiences the 
yeah previous experiences what we had yeah so we can depend on the experiences uh but sometimes the experience part may not be helpful so it's it's always like case by case to go case by case Yeah. Because they can't hear you. Yeah. Go ahead, Prince. Like one person, if one person uh, had one dream or some vision, mm. and if one person is giving an interpretation, and when it's from the Lord, mm. there will be a witness and some uh, like a confirmation inside to it, right? Yeah. That that's what I'm saying. the spirit bears witness with our spirit like romans 8:16 so the holy spirit in us will help us recognize that yeah it is from god yeah it's correct okay so uh, yeah these these uh, discussions also help us understand what is a true prophetic word let's talk a little bit about our spiritual senses uh, and that's what chapter 9 is all about when we look at ourselves the way god has created us we are a three part being so in first thessalonians 5 verse 23 paul writes now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ so he gives us the impression that we have these three uh parts these three elements or we are a tripartite being put it any way but we are composed of three aspects okay spirit soul and body now out of the three of these the eternal part of us is the spirit the eternal part of us is the spirit which means that it will never die it will never get annihilated it will continue to live on and when we are born again um it is our human spirit that receives the life and the nature of god remember scripture says right you become a new creation our body doesn't change our personality also may not change much but what has changed is our spirit man so our spirit is the key part where a lot uh, you know a lot happens when we are born again and we also know that the holy spirit dwells in us we keep saying that if you are a believer holy spirit lives inside us where does he actually live he lives in our spirit now when we study scriptures for the spirit there are a couple of other words that are used and uh, in many places interchangeably they use those words so instead of spirit heart the heart of a man what is but what does it mean it means the innermost being which is nothing but the spirit the heart of a man or uh, even uh, words like the belly the belly uh, or innermost being is also used so all these are actually referring to the human spirit now apart from the human spirit now we understood it's the it's it's the place where a lot of spiritual uh activity happens like being born again the holy spirit living in it um uh, and you know we i i think you're all learning about developing the human spirit also so you have an idea so that's the spirit part of it us there is the other part of us which is known as the soul so what is the soul all about the soul is the place where we can feel we can think we can reason so uh, it is the place where our mind you know our mind is there our, our soul is your psychological part of us dwells and uh, that is the soul so in our soul we usually say we carry three things one is our uh, mind one is our will and our emotions so they are all part of our soul 
or the psychological part of us. Now the soul, we said the spirit, when we are born again, it is completely transformed. What about the soul? Does the soul get fully transformed? No. Uh, we've got to trust the Lord for the renewal of the mind. Right? Uh, if we are not careful, then a part of the soul can be carnal. That's how it's so funny that a believer is, you know, born again. The spirit is, uh, some people say, wall to wall Holy Ghost. You know, they put it that way in the old language. So, wall to wall Holy Ghost, but then when you look at some of the attitudes, behaviors, values, you know, lack of integrity, you're like shocked. You're, you're thinking wall to wall Holy Ghost. Why is the person like this? Because the soul part of us can be fleshly and carnal. And there's a lot of work that has to go into the soul to have that renewed mind and, uh, you know, uh, overcome the flesh, crucify the flesh. So those are things that need to happen in the soul. Uh, and, and that's how it works. And when it comes to our, uh, what we are talking about right now, hearing from God, the soul is very important. You know, many times what people might say is, yeah, spirit is important. You'll get God's message in your spirit. But soul, forget about it. It's not helpful. But actually, when the soul is has a renewed mind, Okay, it acts as a good processor. When you hear from the Lord, it will help as a processing unit, the soul. And then we can confidently release the word of God. The third part of us, of course, is our body. The body uh, is um, the physical, physical unit that helps us live here on the earth. Uh, we call it a tent. Sometimes Paul says, my tent, I will put away my tent or uh, uh, things like uh, outer man. Okay, uh, And sometimes the combination of body and soul, the desires of the body and soul, we have appetites, right? In our body, we have appetites, appetite for food, appetite for uh, rest. Uh, so all kinds of appetites we carry as far as the body is concerned. And even the soul, we said the soul can be carnal or fleshly. The combination of body and soul, right? Uh, sometimes the Bible refers to it as the flesh also. Because wrong desires can arise from both of these parts. Whereas when you talk about the spirit, the spirit technically is that part which has been renewed and received the life of God, you know, in fullness. So this is about the spirit, soul, and body. Body, a flesh. See, usually we talk about fleshly desires that arise in the soul. But there are times when a combination of body and soul yeah, is also referred to as the flesh. Because evil appetites or bad appetites can arise from both of these. But you know what? Spirit also, if we are not careful, can be corrupted. Scripture does say that. Yeah, that that is there. But there's a scripture. I I'm. Uh, it's if I'm not wrong, it is. Uh, I'll just tell you now itself. Huh. Yeah, it's referred to spirit only. So for a long time, even I had this doubt, like how come, uh, um, see spirit is pure, isn't it? Spirit is pure. Uh, I, I don't know what Galatians 6 8 says, but. Okay, uh, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Uh, it's probably refer, referring to the soul only. But then he has put it as spirit there. Second Corinthians 7. Second Corinthians 7. I'll read the NKJV version. It says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness, 
of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god open your hearts to us we have wronged no one we have corrupted no one we have cheated no one so here paul is actually saying filthiness of the spirit like even i never knew that the spirit can be corrupted see the spirit is born again it is completely transformed that is done done deal we accept that but there are instances where corruption can affect the spirit also filthiness can touch the spirit also if we are not careful yeah yeah um uh, see i don't don't have a specific example of course flesh that you can we can go back to galatians chapter 5 okay because it tells us about walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh so i'll just read out that passage for us yeah uh verse 19 galatians 5 19 now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like which means there are more of which i tell you beforehand just as i also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god okay so um this is referring to the works of the flesh but the corruption of the spirit we we i i don't know of any other scripture that is talking about filthiness of the spirit but my understanding is these same things can probably touch the spirit is what i feel yeah yeah that's what i'm i'm thinking like um like your uh, hebrews 6 no in that it says like if somebody has tasted of the the um, works of god like the born again life and the power of the spirit and if they turn away it's very it's impossible for them to come back so though their spirit is born again something has happened to the spirit uh but again know that we're not talking about like a normal believer who is Uh, trying to sincerely live their life for god you know of course we fall but we rise up and we keep making the journey it's not talking about such believers it's talking about some extreme cases oh, willingly unrepentant whose hearts have become hard such scenarios yeah so there is something known as uncleanness of the f- f- uh, like filthiness of the spirit so i just wanted to bring that to our attention all right so now let's come here to hearing from the holy spirit we have understood there are three parts of who we are so where exactly uh, does the communication of the holy spirit come the answer is the spirit the spirit part of us and the holy spirit is the one who speaks to us jesus told us that in john chapter 16 he told that okay i am going to go away but my spirit will come and he will guide you into all truth this is uh, john 16 verse 13 so let me read the whole passage there verse 13 to 15 he said uh, however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come he will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you all things that the father has are mine therefore i said that he will take of mine and declare it to you so the point is the holy spirit communicates with a child of god the holy spirit communicates with the children of god this is a privilege that we have god 
speaks to us. He is a speaking God and he speaks to his children. He also leads his children. That's what the Bible says. In Romans 8.14, the scripture says, For as many as are led by God are the sons of God. Okay? So all of us have been hearing the Spirit and have been um, being led by the Holy Spirit. I know today we are here uh, in chapter 9 and we are discussing how to hear from the Holy Spirit. But here is the truth. All of us as believers in our journey, we have been hearing. He has been leading us. We are listening to him and we are following him. So we, we know, we may not know technically how we've been hearing, but we have been hearing from the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit guides us. How does he guide us? So a couple of scriptures. We stated Romans 8.16, where we said that the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So Holy Spirit, we said Holy Spirit speaks, Holy Spirit guides where does the communication come? To our spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So in my spirit, I can pick up. Is something from God or not? What is God saying? Should I take this up or not? In my spirit is where I can sense it. Now there is another beautiful scripture. This is it. Proverbs 20 and verse 27. It says, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. So the scripture is saying, it's using another word. Earlier we said spirit. There are words such as heart, belly, innermost being. Now there is a, a like an analogy or a picture. How is the spirit of a man? It's, it's a lamp. It's like a lamp. We all know. A lamp has to be lit for us to get some light. So think of the human spirit like that. My spirit is a lamp. Now, when the lamp is not lit, I don't know what to do. But you know how the knowledge of the Lord comes? We see passages in scripture, in Psalm 18 verse 28, you know, the psalmist, he, he says, You will light my lamp. The Lord, my God will enlighten my darkness. So there is a lamp. It needs light. And David is saying, what will God do? He will light my lamp. He will enlighten my darkness. In other words, what he's saying is, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when He speaks to my spirit, it is like, you know, the matches are lighting up the lamp. So we may be in darkness. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to go. But suddenly the light comes or the Holy Spirit brings His communication. He speaks to us. So in the darkness, the light of God is lit up. That's what we are saying. See, hearing from the Holy Spirit. Every time the lamp is lit up, okay, we receive what is in God's mind. That's how it works. So when I hear a word from God, when I get a picture, when I, when I sense something, what, what is actually happening? You can imagine this. My spirit, it's a lamp, it's dark. Zoom, you know, like when communication comes from God, the lamp has come to light. So that's how... God communicates. So in the spirit, what is God doing? He's constantly lighting up the lamp. He's lighting it up. And we are receiving uh, the brightness of God. The darkness is going or the ignorance is going. Right? Uh, that's how it is. And scriptures also tell us in Psalm 42 and verse 7, that passage says, deep calls out to deep. So God by his spirit is speaking to my spirit. That is the connection. Now that is the connection which we have to strengthen when we want to hear from God. Okay, we keep saying, I want to hear from God, I want to hear from God. Okay, then the Holy Spirit, 
speaking to my spirit in other words as we said the light is coming from there and it is lighting up the la- lamp that has to keep happening and then i've got to pick up like what exactly that light is all about that is how the holy spirit speaks to us so in my spirit man is where i receive god's communication so we generally say this spirit to spirit communication from god is spirit to spirit does that mean that god cannot speak in my uh, soul does that mean that god cannot speak through my body no he can remember we said some physical sensations sometimes we can sense that or in our emotions right uh, we we feel certain things he can touch our soul and our body to communicate but the main way the main way is of course the spirit that is how he speaks to us now uh, there is a beautiful the next section is really beautiful there's a diagram page 155 okay i i wish i could have uh, i i could complete the whole thing today because it flows right what we are discussing uh, but we may have to take a break and uh, next friday mostly we won't have a class because we will all be on mission trip um so we'll we'll have to pick it up next week in a just i will tell you then we'll see the details huh okay we did this okay so you you've done it once okay that's great so then i'll just tell the outline few key thoughts and we'll stop at that so you see we've said that you know we receive communication in our spirit but once we receive it the soul acts as a processor we said we have will we have emotions we have mind in the soul so the word will go from the spirit to the soul analysis okay rationalizing what is it from god is it not from god how do i feel about it what should i do about it what is will will is decision making right should i do it should i not do it should i say it should i so the soul how healthy our soul is how godly our soul is matters so when our soul is able to process it then we can take it to the next level right we can apply it so that is how we operate now when we talk about the spirit there are the five senses of the spirit whenever we use terminology especially in prophesying i feel okay i i sense uh, or uh, there are other senses also i see or there can also be things like taste and smell it is possible so the spirit man as we understand has capacities it has capacities maybe more than the human body because a human body has all these senses we can see we can hear we can feel we can touch we can taste but the human spirit can do this and much more so here is the key for a person who wants to operate in the gifts of the spirit i have to strengthen my spirit senses okay so when my spirit senses are strong then whenever i say things like i see i'm seeing this i am hearing this or i am feeling joy i am feeling um, a sense of caution what's happening my spirit is becoming so much sensitive or you may use the word stronger that all these abilities are now giving me an idea of what god is saying what god is speaking okay so that's how it works we've got to strengthen our spirit senses pick up the information use our godly soul to assess it and then go ahead and release it okay so i'll just stop at that we can always discuss more later so any uh, questions anything to discuss right now uh okay yes neena um can can you hear moment, me Nina? please give us a moment yeah yes go ahead yeah this uh, thing about uh, contamination or uh, filthiness of flesh uh, which which uh, is mentioned in second corinthians which we talked about 
uh, it says, let us purify ourselves from everything that um, the version that I'm reading says contaminates. So otherwise, it's filthiness. No? Yes. So the way to get, um, when it says, let us purify ourselves, mm. I think there's one more um, thing in uh, Thessalonians also, where it says uh, something about praying that you keep your spirit, soul, and body, keep them blameless, right? Huh. So there yeah. is a ten they can be, like you mentioned, a tendency for the spirit to be contaminated. So yes. will that happen? Uh, maybe, see, because if we, how do we get out of that? Huh. Is it by keeping our, you know, our source has to be the word of God and the Holy Spirit, of course, he will always confirm what the word of God says. There will be no contradiction there. Is that the way that we can, can it come about because, uh, you know, of listening to wrong kind of things or, uh, you know, when we say contamination, uh, the spirit is not getting the right uh, information from the Holy Spirit or from the Word is that when the contamination takes place? Okay, and, so I'll, yeah. sure. Good question, Nina. I'll just give you my uh, perspective. Uh, just, just a moment, please. All right. So, um, so the way we could get contaminated, firstly, is to not uh, engage with the Word. When we look at what Jesus said in John 17, right? He said, you are clean. You're already clean because of my word. So then we understand that the word has a property of cleansing us. When we look at Ephesians chapter 5, uh, we see that the Lord Jesus cleanses his church. He's preparing a spotless, blemishless bride. You know, we read about that. And it says he cleanses her by the washing of the of the word. So how does the cleansing happen? By the word. So if there's no word in our lives, obviously uh, we cannot experience cleansing. So the word is important now. Just because we are saying the word, listening to the word or having the word in, in, in us, that in itself will not do the job because James talks about being hearers of the word, you know, and not being doers of it. So uh, we've got to respond also. So this filthiness of the spirit can happen because of yeah, disobedience. When we read the book of Hebrews, it's beautiful. He goes on saying, he says, if you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. So that hardening of the heart is what? The hardening of the heart is we know what is right, but we don't do it. We know what is right, but we postpone it. It's disobedience. Partial disobedience is also disobedience. So for God, you know, the thing that corrupts us, firstly, we don't know the word. That can damage, right? That we won't be cleansed. But even if we know the word, when we are, when our hearts are not sensitive to God, we we are we're like, yeah, we, we take it lightly. That is the dangerous part. In fact, the book of Hebrews talks about that. When you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts. He repeats it again and again. Do not harden your hearts. If you get the slightest prompting from the Holy Spirit, respond, respond, respond. So when we are living our Christian life like that, being sensitive and being obedient, then we, are far, we can be far away from this corruption. But if we are not... Right? If we are hardening our hearts, that's the opposite. That hardening in the long run can lead to what we are talking about, Nina. And that's really dangerous. Yeah. Does that help you? Does that help? Uh, does it answer your question? Uh, could you please unmute and let us know? Okay. Yeah. She says yes. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Really good question there. And uh, what you uh, asked, one more part that you asked, if we are getting the wrong information, will we get corrupted? Right? Because I think today that's that's a danger. We hear so many things uh, on YouTube and everywhere. We don't know if it's good content. So actually it can. If we are continuously listening to wrong teaching, it can mess with our minds. So it's so important to decide what you want to listen to, 
okay don't listen to everything don't listen to everyone if anywhere you sense that there is something inappropriate or you know wrong interpretation of scripture no need to expose yourself to that ha so when people hear the teaching yes they may not understand like whether they're hearing it whether wrong or right because some scriptures are you can't understand clearly so they'll take by their perception because some things this is how they want so they hear only that they don't want to look the other way around like they think that's the correct thing i know uh, see if people are in that mode it's quite difficult actually to convince them uh, out of it so in that situation it might be best to just pray for them pray for them and if there is an opening if they are willing to listen then of course to state why that teaching is not correct or all that but yeah can begin with prayer yes okay good so all right we will uh, stop with that for today and then we will meet next week could uh, somebody please pray so that we can wrap up father god we thank you and we bless you for this time you have given us lord help us to hear from you lord help us to be a blessing to others lord help us lord holy spirit help us lord to hear from you clearly lord so that we will will be a blessing and help us to read your word and do what is right before you lord In jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you nina thank you everyone god bless you have a great week